This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on January the 25th, 2016. Enjoy! Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Welcome back, everybody, from the Christmas break. As any fool can plainly see, James is here. Big <laughs> That's because he's Wait. currently unemployed. <laughs> Who are you calling a fool? You're a bigger fool than I am. Shush. All right, uh, James has got a little bit of a presentation for you, and then I will be taking over after he's done. Uh, when he's finished, uh, I hope you'll have some questions for him because his presentation is a little bit thin. So with that, well, James, you're up. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi, camera. That's over there. Stupid mic. Maybe you'll learn something today, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> you always learn something. Paper and pen. <laughs> it was a bad idea for me to come here. <laughs> um, so we're, I'm going to mainly talk about new features in Windows 10 because Windows 10, unlike all the the other operating systems is now free. So you can just get it when, when you want. So there are new features um, that weren't in Windows 7 and not really in Windows 8. The big, the big difference now is that we actually have a start menu again, which is good, instead of the three pages of uselessness. Um, but some of the new features, excuse me, some of the new features, um, let me just open random things here. PowerPoint, oh, shouldn't open PowerPoint, oh well. Um, who here remembers that you can put, in, in Windows 7, you can put uh, two windows together like, like that? and have it like this, side by side. Well, now we can have up to four windows together. Excuse me. By hitting the corner, you can make a new one. Uh, any corner you want. Like if I want on this side, I just hit the corner, and it goes to the corner. There's also key bindings for it. Uh, the corner of the screen. Uh, the other thing you can do with that is uh, with the Windows key. Do we have a keyboard? No keyboards? Okay. Well, anyone who looks at your uh, keyboard, there's a button with four squares, that's your Windows key. So if you hold that, and well, on a window, you can also move the windows up. So if I want it on the right side, or right, right side, um, I would just hit the right key, and it would go over there. If I want it in the right top corner, I'll hit up, and it goes there as well. So, with that, you can have four things up, and for me, that's always good, because I have one for background noise, one for information, and then one for typing. Like, you can have your notebook. Yeah, man. Like, I could have my notebook down here with information on the top and, like, a background music or a video and see everything without having to close the window, reopen the window, minimize the window. It makes things very easy to access. 
you just drag it to the side? Yeah, you just click a window you want, and if you do the side, it goes to the one side. If you do the top, it will make it the whole screen. And then you can, if you make sure your mouse hits the corner, it will go into the corner, that corner. Um, and the same thing for down here. You just have to hit the corner and it will do the rest for you. There's also a new feature where once you start making programs go or the windows go to a corner or the side, it automatically brings up the other windows and say, do you want this to be on this side as well? So I can hit control panel and it will automatically fill the spot without me having to drag it down there. And, huh? Um, on this, it looks like that. Is it readable? I mean, it's not too small. It it looks like a normal size window. Like it won't change the the text and everything won't change size. The screen, it, the window itself, just shows a smaller section. So, like on a full screen, uh, it shows all of them in a row plus video but if I put it back to where it was in the corner it still shows everything as the same size but you just have to scroll a bit but from there you can actually edit the size of it so it takes up more but it's just an easy way to get everything separated and look at it at the same time uh, to make things bigger, you, you go to any edge of the window you want, yeah. and you'll get these two arrows. You just click and hold the left mouse button, and you can make it as small as you want, as big as you want. So it's a good way to organize your files, because I have like 20 files up. Yeah. Um, you mean like this? No, no, down on the taskbar. You know, you just break it up. Too many things on the taskbar. Okay. Uh, I'm just getting rid of, yeah, cascade, cascade windows. windows and everything, like, so that, that cascade windows puts every, all your windows and and yeah, on top of each other, but so you can see each tab. So if I click on this, yeah. I can still see it yeah. back here. Yeah. Um, no, I, I didn't know what the difference was for that. But yeah, Cas Cascade just stacks it all on top of one another like a file, and the other ones just separate it so you can view them all at the same time without clicking on the screen. The other thing you can do. Um, that is sort of like the same thing, but on a bigger scale, is make a virtual desktop. So, uh, there's two ways to do this as well. Um, the more con convoluted way is to hold the control key, your Windows key, and hit D, and that will make a new desktop. Now, I still have the other desktop open, it just has two of them open now. So I can go to um, any, do we not have internet? Come on. Okay, then we don't have internet. But pretend I'm on YouTube. <laughs> and I could play YouTube or any kind of music sound or anything from this window. I get that approach. Go back over. Thank you. This is why we have preparation time. Okay, well, everyone use your imaginations. Pretend you're listening to music on the other screen. When I go over to the, the screen that doesn't have the YouTube open or any music pro program, it will still be playing 
and it won't take up screen room. So I can still go to another Google, um, another place and search up kittens or something. Uh, and it won't take any more room, more tabs. All you have to do to go back is just switch over. Now, to uh, continuing with the key bindings with this, if I do hit Control Windows and F4, it will delete the current desktop that you're on. Um, and as you were seeing me do before, let me just make a couple here. Have that open there. That blank. Um, if I also hold Control Windows and the move the arrow keys, I will switch to the next the next desktop or the previous one, depending. Um, so that's a quick way to go through it. The other easier way, probably just takes more steps is, let me go back here, at the bottom of your screen on Windows 10 there is a square with two rectangles beside it. That is your task viewer and if you click that all your windows that you have up and all the previous desktops will also come up in a format like this. So from here you can hit, uh, hit the new desktop button that will automatically make it for you. And then you can just also, like I want desktop 2 now, maybe desktop 3. It's an easier way instead of key bindings if you forget them. Um, the original desktop never changes. No, the, net, the original desktop you can't delete or anything, okay. so don't worry about it. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> I was like delete, delete, delete. Uh, I can't delete it. Oh, that's good. Um, because if you forget that you don't have one up and then try to delete it, I was worried about that. But they 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 already have the safety precautions. They don't. You don't have to worry. So it also gives you a pre a preview on what's on each desktop. If you can't see, so on my first one, I have two Google Chromes open. Uh control panel and my file or his file, one of the two, or your file anyways. And to delete it, all you have to do is highlight um, the desktop you want to delete and in the corner it will be an X. Hit that, yawn, don't have to worry about it. And if there is something on the previous desktop, it will transfer it to the next open desktop. So you don't have to worry about accidentally deleting um, text, unsaved text or anything. And if I delete desktop 2, it appears on uh, desktop 1. And then I just click that, and I have millions of files on here. Any questions so far? So when you, you can leave all of those desktops on there and then you, you shut down, when you fire up again they're all still there? I'm not sure about that. I could try, but it'd probably break the computer. <laughs> or at least the setup. But um, when, when we send out the information about all this, I'll try it, try it later. Okay. And it will be in the uh, video or whatever text everyone that Grandpa sends you. Um, whether it can or can't. Uh, so that's pretty much the new features in terms of window movement, desktop manipulation, and all that. There is one other thing that confused me until I figured it out, or actually looked at it, um, and that is uh, default programs. They change how default programs work. So before you could just, like, if my, uh, Mozilla came up, uh, Mozilla Firefox, and says, you want to be, uh, I want to be the desktop, or the, the default uh, explorer, you would just hit yes, and it would be done. 
In Windows 10, you have to actually go to a program to actually change the defaults now instead of automatically doing it. So with that, uh, there are two control panels now. One's an app. Damn, Microsoft and their apps. Um, so if you hit the start menu and go to settings, you'll get this kind of control panel, which doesn't really tell you where everything is. <laughs> I don't even know where anything is. But you'd go, if you don't have control, like the main control panel that we all know, uh, you go to system. I hope I'm right. <laughs> really? Move down. It's refusing to move. All right then. <laughs> no clue. I'm just gonna make it bigger. Um, that was in. This place is confusing and <laughs> makes my brain hurt. It wasn't in here, was it? <laughs> <laughs> Hate it. Folks, you test it before you do it. Do you sweat? Come on, Bob. Do you sweat? <laughs> I hate the new ses s settings. Hit it with a burning passion. And we're back here. You can tell I don't use Windows 10 that much. At least I have it. There we go. Found it. Yeah, you go to, you go to right click on the desktop and you go to personalize. And underneath, if this will hit you, underneath themes, um, you will go to related settings and edit desktop icon settings. And that's where you would get uh, your computer, your files, the recycle bin control panel, like we used to do on XP7. They just made it. Ten times harder to get to. Yeah. And then you just turn on check mark control panel. And then it will just show up on your desktop now. And it will be the good old version that we all know how to navigate and know where everything is. I'll make these bigger for you guys. Now, I don't know for sure if they turned it off, but um, if it's not on the desktop, that is how you would get to control panel now. Um, or the easier way, if you just want to get it right out of the way, is at the bottom of the screen next to your start menu, there's a search. There's a search for control panel, and that will also bring it up as well. Want to permanently have it on your desktop, and you have to jump through hoops. Good old Microsoft. So now, once we have Control Panel up, as I said, we have now default programs that we actually have to go into and change the programs. Um, who does what and whatnot. So. Now you click on default programs and set your default programs. And then you'll get a list like this with every single program, app, application, anything uh, that can open up uh, files or anything of the sort. So uh, again, let's say I want Firefox to be my main 
default, I would actually have to find Firefox in this list of programs, click on it, and then hit set pro program as default. And that will change it. Um, Grandpa can edit this later. <laughs> but I hit set, uh, set program as default and now has all the defaults. So any kind of, uh, URL or web link or, or anything will go to Firefox instead of, um, Microsoft Edge, which is the new, new and improved, um, Internet Explorer. And it's not improved. <laughs> Um, you would find it in your start menu. At least this is how I know how to do it. You would go, no, not there. Stupid start menu. You'd open up start menu and at the bottom, right below power, is all apps. You would click that, find Firefox or whatever other thing, Google Chrome, Opera, Oprah. The thing is busted. <laughs> it won't scroll down for me. Well, let's just be <laughs> let's just pretend it's Audacity. You would uh, click, or didn't click. You would right click once you're fine again. You right click on it, and you can. Pin to start to get it just on the start menu. Or underneath more, you can pin to taskbar, which would put it at the bottom here. And that would, and it will always be there, not hidden by any windows or anything. Or if you just want it on the actual desktop, just click it and drag it. Click and hold and drag it over, and it'll make a shortcut to, to it. So you can just click it there, and then you go. It wasn't just the trackpad, I was trying to scroll down as well. Oh, there we go. Screw you, Logitech. <laughs> Breaking my stuff. So Mozilla Firefox would be underneath him. And you just do the same thing, right click it. And you can go to pin to start, uh, pin to taskbar, or just click it and drag it over to the desktop. <coughs> so once you there, there's one other program that I know that we should probably replace because the new one, the new version of it isn't good at all. Um, underneath P, wherever that is, there you go. They added a new, well, it wasn't new, it was in Windows 8, but they made photos uh, the app, their own application, the main for any images, JPEGs, and anything, it don't work too well. <laughs> and it looks confusing and all that. So I prefer photo gallery. It's the main, main thing for everyone. So you go to find photo gallery. And when you set this program as default, Okay, for, for this it worked. Um, sometimes it won't take all of the uh, defaults for it. So, um, like, it, um, when I did it, it would only take JPEGs as the default or TIFF. But if that does happen and it says this thing has 
five out of the eight defaults. Uh, you just hit choose defaults for this program. And then from there you can just hit select all and that would select every kind of picture you can think of. Um, which would be opened up by photo gallery. So you just hit select all. Say save. Done. Let it load a bit. And that's pretty much the same thing for any other thing. Like if you want something to be like some music is in, uh, I think it would be groove music for this. Um, if you wanted to go back to your original um, music, uh, that played music, you would have to find again. Uh, for us, it would be VLC. And we're like, yeah, we want uh, everything to play in VLC instead of iTunes or any other movie. Uh, movie file. So they <laughs> made it a lot harder. Instead of just saying, yeah, I want this to be default now, you have to rummage around and find it. Good job, Microsoft. Good job. Best interest NA. Now, I was going to sh uh, share a story and how I had to figure out safe mode again. But I don't think we can sh actually show safe mode on this. At least it won't show up on the big screen. I'll just tell you instead of showing you, though. Um, I got hit by malware. <laughs> it was so bad I couldn't, couldn't, couldn't fix it at all. Uh, I spent like two hours in the morning trying to fix my own computer. Eventually, I had to uh, system restore it which we don't recommend for you at all. If you screw it up, you might screw up your computer. Um, but to, I didn't know how to get to safe mode anymore because I was trying to get to safe mode. And for those who don't know what safe mode is, it's your computer runs at the bare minimal of programs that it needs for your display, Sometimes your sound and network. That's all it runs pretty much. Anything to get it to run and then do a certain task. Normally you would have to hit like F9 or F8 while booting up after turning on your computer, figure out which function key to hit. But now with Windows 10, as you restart through the menu or the power options, you have to hold shift and hit restart while holding shift. And after it logs off, it will go to a certain magical area where you can then say load in safe mode next time. And then you, that's how you get to safe mode. But other than, other than to see if your computer works still or not, I wouldn't recommend safe mode that much. Because, uh, well, he doesn't recommend it. I say go for it. You can't screw up anything. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> you got my seal of approval. Uh, he needs more work. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, any questions about uh, setting defaults or other settings? No? Okay, then you can take this. Okay, good. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.